All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, this is a session about studying science at Carleton. My name is Jessica, and I'm an international admissions and recruitment officer at Carleton University, and also a very proud alum. Um, I don't need to tell you what year I graduated in, but a few years ago. And I am very happy to welcome our star guest today, Dr. Kim Hellman, who is an Associate Dean in the Faculty of Science and an Assistant Professor in the area of Neuroscience. Um, Kim completed her PhD at a wonderful Canadian university, Queen's University, um, and then has since worked at uh, Cambridge University, the University of British Columbia, um, and in apparently the spare time that she has, I'm not sure how she manages, it also runs a award-winning podcast called Minding the Brain. So Kim, do you want to come on camera, show us your face? There she is. Good morning, Kim. Thank you so much for joining today. So the way that this session is going to work is I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction. Uh, I know you're all here to learn and talk about science, but we're going to talk more broadly up front about Carleton. And then I'm going to hit Kim with some questions that both you submitted and we've come up with in my office to really highlight the science programs at Carleton. And then towards the end, we will cover some more logistical procedural questions that you submitted around submitting your application, questions around tuition, scholarship, residence. So don't worry, those answers are coming for you at the back end of the presentation. If you do have questions or require clarification as we're talking, please do use the chat box. I have my colleague and friend, Nady, in the background who'll be monitoring that chat for us. Okay, well, with all that said and done, let's go. So I thought first we would talk about Carleton in the numbers. So Overall, our student population is about medium size by Canadian standards at about 35,000 students. 14% of those students are international. And what's even more interesting about that number is that those students are coming from over 150 countries, which creates a really dynamic student population. And I think Kim will agree based on what she sees in her classrooms, the way that our international and domestic students are interacting with each other, coming at problems from their own perspectives and uh, lived experience. So we're really proud of that. And one of the reasons that these students are choosing Carleton is because we are consistently ranked in the top five comprehensive universities in Canada. So what does comprehensive mean? Well, it means that we have undergraduate studies as we're focusing on today, but we also offer master's and PhD programs. So that means that as an undergraduate, you have the opportunity to benefit from the level of research and higher education that's happening all around you. And there'll be opportunities to collaborate with those graduate students and your professors in that research as well. And what are we all working towards, or many of us working towards through our undergraduate experiences, is employment, right? So we are also consistently ranked in the top 10 universities in Canada for graduate employability. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we're preparing our students for that level of success upon graduation within the Faculty of Science today. So where are we located? So as I hope by now, you know that Carleton is located in Canada's capital city of Ottawa, a G7 capital city. So lots of great benefits about studying in Ottawa that uh, I'm going to ask him about later. But to talk a bit right now about our campus. So as you can see in this picture, Carleton is a self-contained campus. So we don't have multiple campuses around cities or across different cities but all of your facilities, academic, athletics, residents are located in one place. And we think that this is really valuable because it really, it enhances that sense of community that you feel on campus. As you're walking between classes, you're bumping into to peers, to teaching assistants, to your professors and friends. So that's just kind of 
you know, an extra bonus about being on campus is that level of familiarity that you'll develop. You will benefit from a world-class, world-class athletic facility. Um, we have on-campus mental health counseling, which is free to all of our students, health services, which include doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists. Um, there are restaurants and countless coffee shops, it feels. But then off campus too, you can see in this picture, downtown is maybe a 10 or 15 minute transit right away. The airport also about 15 minutes in the other direction. And you can easily walk to grocery stores, cafes, and other shopping and restaurants, all within a short distance from campus. Well, a really, really lovely place to study. You could see lots of nature around campus. We're flanked by both the World UNESCO site, which is the Rideau Canal on one side and the Rideau River on another, both which make really nice, relaxing study spots or places just to hang out and picnic and decompress after a tough exam, maybe. Um, so, Kim, I'm actually going to tag you in now. I'd love for you to talk or highlight some of the um, noteworthy facilities for science students on our campus. Sorry, I, I don't know if it's me or you, but uh, I, you're coming in and out. So if you could repeat the question, I think I'm going to try to move around. Something about uh, the noteworthy facilities. Yeah, unplug. Sorry about that. So the question, Kim, was just asking you to highlight some of the science facilities that um, our science students have access to. And you're still muted, Kim. <laughs> Are you talking about athletics? No, science facilities. Science like facilities. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the labs, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. What, what are the facilities yeah. that our students are using that might be remarkable or unique to Carleton? Um, yep. So we have, I think you've got here pictured our greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So we have the greenhouse that is... Uh, it's owned by the Department of Biology, uh, and the students can float in and out of there. It's It's been well-maintained, and every uh, fall we have the butterfly exhibit. So we bring in live butterflies that hatch, and you can walk around in there and uh, get all the butterflies, which is pretty remarkable and, and fun, if you like butterflies. There's some people actually <laughs> Who doesn't like uh, butterflies? Are scared of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got, I see you got a picture on the slide here. We have our Earth Sciences students that are heading off to the Bahamas <laughs> tomorrow, uh, actually today. Uh, well, so that's good day for it, I think. Yeah, and not a Carlton facility, but they are definitely, they can go on these amazing uh, field trips. And of course, all our uh, incredible labs um, that uh, we have the super lab in chemistry, we've got the health sciences, neuroscience lab, uh, we have the Tory building biology labs. Um, so those are, of course, our, our amazing spaces. And then we've got lots of great spaces for students uh, to study and to, to learn and to hang out. We've got the uh, the fourth floor of the library where I see a lot of our students. And then most of our, our, our buildings that are newer have lots of windows. And we definitely have uh, spaces that's uh, in the health sciences uh, building that students can just line up along the window. They have a... a they can look out onto the river and um, it's it's really quite beautiful. So we do have this, it's it's considered the hidden gem uh, as Carleton is, is when people come onto our campus, they don't, they didn't realize how beautiful it actually is. Um, so lots of spaces on campus for our students to, to learn, to play, to hang out. Um, and uh, yeah, in particular in science, get on those hands-on experiences. I hope that's what you were looking for, Jessica. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And I love how you, you've talked about windows, which seems like, okay, what's the big deal about windows? But, you know, so many of these institutions um, might feel more like institutions, right? Where it's kind of dark, um, not a lot of access to natural light, but I'm sure as a, a neuroscientist, you can speak to the fact that natural lighting and access to nature really does enhance our sense of well-being, which is gonna make our students um, happier, healthier, and just better at their academics, right? So that's a really uh, good point. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop sharing our screen and do a little bit more back and forth with Kim um, with some of the questions that we've prepared based on your submissions and some of our curiosities. So Kim, you alluded to some hands-on experience with our students heading off to the Bahamas today. Can you talk a little bit about more about how our students gain that hands-on experience? Because it really is, um, 
kind of threaded through the philosophy of how Carlton delivers our programming. I think you'll agree. Um, and are first year students having these experiences or are they just sitting in lectures? So yeah, thanks Jessica. And uh, for sure, this is what I would say makes Carlton stand out in terms of their experiences in, in uh, as a, a student in science. So one of the things that we do offer is something that I oversee is called the Dean's Summer Research Internship. And any student who's a first year student in any program in science, so that's computer science, health science, biology, biochem, physics, math, you name it, you can do it. Um, if their grades are at about a 10 or 11 or higher. So, it, you know, these are a high achieving students. So around an A, uh, A minus average after their first semester, they're invited to apply for the Dean Summer Research Internship. And uh, what this means is that you you then find a, a supervisor or a researcher that you are really interested in working in their uh, research um, throughout the summer. And you, you don't have to stay within your discipline. I've, I've supervised computer science students as a neuroscientist. So sometimes the work I do is very interdisciplinary. So I can bring in students from other uh, disciplines. And you're paid to do that research for a summer. And it's a wonderful experience. And I've supervised... I think four or five DSRI students over the last few years. And some of my DSRI students are still in my lab. And in fact, one of them is applying to do graduate work with me next year. So you can you often as a DSRI student, right from your first year, you're starting to gain those uh, lab and research skills. And then you continue to work uh, in, the, in the professor's lab all throughout your four years of university. We've also this year started, uh, we're really happy to announce this, the Black and Indigenous uh, Student Research Internship. And those are for students who self-identify Black or Indigenous. Um, there's a special scheme that we're following one of the, the, the granting agencies in Canada to afford these opportunities to our Black and Indigenous students. And there you need a, a grade of about a B or higher. It's not just for first year, but first year students are welcome to apply. And again, you're, you're, it's the same scheme as the DSRI. You would do a summer research internship in a professor's lab of your choosing. And in this scheme, if you get matching funds through one of these granting agencies, you can earn up to $15,000. Uh, for the summer, which is pretty amazing. And importantly, some of th these research opportunities are open to international students. There are some uh, schemes that are only for domestic students, but these ones are open for our international students, which is really important in terms of that, getting that employability um, and you're working, you're, you're earning um, great money uh, for a summer and, and working towards a potential um, postgraduate uh, career in research or science or health uh, or tech, uh, which is some of our, our great assets here in Canada. So uh, those are definitely what I would say uh, students in first year, they are learning in the classrooms, but we we also at Carleton and Carleton Science, we have a huge um, in, impact or uh, perspective on pedagogy. And what that means is we are really committed to classroom teaching. Our instructors and our, our faculty members who are teaching you are very keen to use evidence-based practices in the classroom. So this often translates to lots of hands-on learning, even in the classroom. So we do a lot of activities. And then of course we have our first year labs. So courses like biology, physics, uh, chemistry uh, have, an, um, yeah, I got them all, uh, have labs associated with them, which uh, students are doing in right in their first year. So again, that hands-on learning experience is very much important to uh, the Carleton Science brand. Um, and we're really pleased to, to offer those kinds of spaces for our students. Great, thank you. I'm sure you could give a three hour presentation on um, all the ways that we're yes. supporting yeah. hands-on learning. But I know, um, so beyond the classroom, Co-op is another way that we're really connecting students with that hands-on learning. And for those of you who aren't familiar yet, um, if you're looking at Canada and Carleton, you will become very familiar with this term. But essentially, co-op is the opportunity to connect what you're learning in the classroom in real-world experience through paid employment. So I won't spend too much time on explaining that further, but Kim, can you explain whether or not co-op is available to your science students and just a little bit more about kind of how that process works, how they're benefiting and coming back into the classroom with that um, kind of enhanced knowledge in their area of study. 
For sure. So uh, yes, we have lots of programs that offer co-op. Um, in fact, I think most of our programs offer co-op. So how it works is that uh, when you apply to Carleton, you would indicate in your uh, preferences that you're looking to to get accepted into a co-op program. And unlike other universities, we don't limit that. Uh, so we don't reserve certain spaces for students that have co-op or not. Uh, if you're interested in it, you can apply and you can even change uh, after your first year. If you're like, ah, I actually want to do co-op, you can you can uh, you can make that change preference. You were you're required to take like I think a pass fail course called Co-op 1000 uh, sometime in your first year, and then your first co-op term is after uh, your your first year of classes, and I believe then you're through I think two more co-op terms your your degree is actually five years but uh as as Jessica was saying um that's extended because you are doing work terms uh and and doing paid employment uh, related to potentially related and I and I want to qualify that in a minute but potentially related to the field of your interest um out of curiosity if if, if everyone who's present um if they're able to type in the chat what programs they're interested in I can give you a little I'm um, just just to, to get a sense of what people are interested in but I would say our computer science program is is very popular in terms of co-op because uh if for those of you that don't know Ottawa which is our nation's capital here in Canada uh we are considered uh uh like Silicon Valley North and that we have a lot of startups and tech companies that are located in the Ottawa area. And Carleton actually has a partnership with what's called CU uh, Canada, which is the, the tech area here in Ottawa. Um, we have lots of partnerships with organizations and our students that do co-op often they're they're taken up very quickly by those those areas and often hired right out of their degree in fact some of our computer science students don't finish their degree because they're hired away and that's fine we we we're we're happy that they've got that training and they they get uh they get jobs right away but because canada is uh, because ottawa is located in the capital we have lots of federal uh institutions as well where our students will do co-op placements and even if so i i i'm a prof in neuro it's it's hard to find neuro specific co-op opportunities but our students get jobs and they get those opportunities and what I always say is they're learning those hands-on skills necessary for any job so they're learning how to to, to work uh in difficult uh you know working with a boss learning how to you know do communications uh spreadsheet input so any of those skills are really valuable for future students and we do find that our students really enjoy the co-op experience we get reflections from the students and they're all very very positive and um of course you got your foot in the door for a future job right that's the benefit of a co-op yeah thank you and there's if students want to know more about co-op there's um, lots on our website and on the science page as well. So um, you can learn more about student testimonials and how the program works. And of course, reach out if you want any further clarification. Um, so in talking about co-op, Kim, you did mention the city of Ottawa and some of the opportunities that come with being in Ottawa and the capital city. Is there anything more you can add about that? Not just necessarily in terms of co-op, but I know industry partners are really important to our faculties here at Carleton. Um, so, you know, how are your students engaging with the um, kind of experts in their field that we have in the city? I think I saw a stat the other day that we have um, 60 of the of federal research offices are based in Ottawa. Now, not all directly science related, but to have that level <laughs> yeah. of access is just so remarkable for our students. For sure. Yeah. And I would say, um, so it's important to recognize that um, as a student at Carleton, you're being taught by faculty members who often, they have a research portfolio, not always, but often. Mm -hmm. And that research portfolio, um, often we have faculty members who have these industry partnerships or uh, government partnerships, or even non-governmental partnerships, not-for-profits, for example. Carleton is a very, we we're, we're started from the community and we we're very much community focused and community engaged. Um, and what that means is say, and I'll give myself as an example. So I'm a researcher, I study addictions and mental health. I have a lot of partnerships with national organizations that oversee policy uh, that relate to addictions and mental health. And my students, are involved in some of these conversations. So they sit in in some of my meetings. I, I right now have a PhD student who we're just about to sign what's called a memorandum of or understanding with a national organization uh, to do, and she's gonna do an internship 
in that organization and and work in partnership uh, to to solve some of the challenges that we're seeing as they relate to substance use health. And of course, she's now going to oversee two of our undergraduate students as part of that project. So it's a beautiful example of how Carleton faculty are committed to to the community globally, locally, and uh, you know I even have students that are really interested in making. We have uh, um, a colleague that's actually in a, in a country in Africa that studies mental health, so we're making partnership with countries in Africa. We've got we're now right now just about to start an MO, sign an MOU with Pakistan, so uh, also to create those international and local connections so that we can have students that are influencing um, how our country in and other countries health and wealth right and tech and economy so this is really uh the benefit of being in the the national capital area with all those wonderful um, um organizations that we can do partnerships with yeah i think that's a really great point that there are so many great opportunities in ottawa but also ottawa itself allows our students and faculty to extend outside of ottawa because it's such an internationally connected city um, I mean, case in point, we have over 130 embassies and high commissions just in this city alone. Um, so, so much opportunity for students to be connected domestically and internationally, which is a huge benefit. Um, okay, so let's I'm just step away a little bit from the academic side of things. Are our science students having any fun? What are they doing when they're not in the library, not in your classes? Are there clubs? How are they engaging and socializing with each other? Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, first of all, we have the overall that the Science Society is called, uh, it's we call it SISOC for Science Society. So that's okay. any student in the Faculty of Science can join the Science Society. Uh, and I work in partnership with SISOC in my role as Associate Dean. And just to give you an example, this past weekend, they held uh, a ball uh, that was at the National Arts Center. It was beautiful. They, they got a great space and it was called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So everybody was dressed up like old Hollywood. Uh, it was, of course, a sit down uh, dinner with dancing and myself and the Dean of Science Maria DeRosa were invited as, as special guests so we gave a little uh, spiel but we love doing that we love being with the students and and seeing uh, the joyful times, right? And 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 celebrating with the students. So that was super fun. And the SISOC does a tons of activities throughout the year. They do scavenger hunts. They do uh, guest speaking events. Uh, they do a lot of support for, for students in that sort of personal academic mission. And then uh, we also have uh, every uh, unit in science, and I've put them in the chat, has their own undergraduate society. So we have the Carleton Neuroscience Society, the Carleton University Biology Society, the Carleton Computer Science Society. And once again, those are opportunities opportunities for students to get engaged with and 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 meet friends and uh, engage in opportunities that are often social in nature. So they'll do a lot of social events. Uh, and another example of that is the Carleton Neuroscience Society is partnering up with the Carleton University Cognitive Science Society. And I'm going to do a, a live podcast recording of Minding the Brain with my colleague Jim Davies in computer science. So we've booked a room at Carleton. Uh, the students will submit questions uh, and we'll do a live recording of, of that. But there's lots of, you know, our students, um, they really do find a sense of social connection with each other, and, and we really support that and think that that's really important for their development and also their experiences on campus. You can't, like, we're very much about, you can't study 247. You have to take breaks. It's really important to to do all that stuff um, and, and play. So, yeah, lots of those yeah. opportunities. And I think it's also worth mentioning, too, that just because you might be a science student doesn't mean that you're limited to science related clubs and societies. Um, you know, depending oh, on the year, we true. have between 150 to 200 clubs. So if, yeah. you know, it's very normal for students to have multiple interests, especially outside of what they're studying directly. So, you know, if that's athletics or you know something more of a social club then that's absolutely and the well. international students also have clubs too so we do mm -hmm. have like the african student society we do have uh, the muslim student society so we often will have unique uh, societies that relate to the international student experience as well so um, often then uh, students can can find each other um, right. when they're coming from certain countries good Okay, so um, I think now, unless you have anything that you want to add, I'm going to transition to some of, yep, go ahead. 
Yeah, I just want to talk about the Science Student Success Center. Of course, yes. Please yeah. Ahead. So one one unique thing to Carleton as well is uh, we do have the Science Student Success Center, the SSSC as it's known, <laughs> um, and I oversee that. So I direct the SSSC in my role as associate dean, and I have three permanent full time staff uh, that run the the SSSC as well as a team of fifty volunteer mentors that are uh, students. Um, um, current students in science. And the role of the SSSC is uh, literally to support student success. So they will run workshops, how to apply to, to medical school. Uh, uh, Adams just mentioned he's really interested in computer science. We do, they over, they do what's called a, a comp sci tech mixer, where we have about 200 students that attend and we invo invite industry partners to come to that tech mixer for students to learn about job opportunities as it relates to computer science. Uh, I will do, we have the therapy dog that comes there. We'd run the chemistry help desk. So really it's a space for students to come and, and get additional support throughout their academic journey at Carleton. And then of course, uh, they uh, any student is offered the opportunity to be paired up with a mentor, which is a senior student in science, that uh, they can meet as often or as little as they want to get some advice on how to study, uh, how to do well in first year chemistry, um, you know, academic habits, time management, planning. Um, so we, we really think that that's an important part part of our student success uh, opportunities at, at, at Carleton is really through that SSSC. Uh, and thank you, Nady, for um, uh, putting the, the link in the chat there about what is the SSSC. Um, and yeah, Melon uh, Melkner, I think, Melkner, uh, Biology and Health Science. Yeah, awesome. Two great programs. Biology is one of our biggest programs. Uh, lots of different opportunities within biology, uh, lots of combined honors. Uh, and Health Science is one of our newest programs uh, with a lot of students that have a view to medical school will be applying to the health sciences. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so... Um... I'm going to talk now a little bit about that application process and then for students who have burning questions that they want to put to Kim, um, we will take those at the end. So if you want to ask uh, more nuanced questions about programs you're interested in or other hands-on opportunities within those programs, you will absolutely have your chance. Um, but first, let's go through the logistical stuff. So for those of you who have not yet applied, I wanted to just pause for a second and talk about admission requirements as you might be um, kind of deciding if science is for you. So for um, all of the programs or degrees across the Faculty of Science, so we're talking computer science, we're talking health science, we're talking mathematics, and then we're talking about the you know 18 programs, I think, within science itself, um, the requirements will vary. So when we're talking about cutoffs or GPA requirements, I can't lay them all out for you here, but if you scan that QR code, it will take you to a resource on our website, which will allow you to input your specific curriculum, uh, your program of interest, and it'll give you an idea of the specific requirements based on your scenario. Um, but the main thing where sometimes we st see students get a little bit caught up would be with prerequisites. So prerequisites would be those courses you must have to be eligible for your degree program of interest. So across all of the sciences, math is the number one main prerequisite. So typically, except for a couple of exceptions, that will be at the highest level. So grade 12 or the A level or um, IB, so whatever your curriculum is. And then again, depending on the degree that you're pursuing. So Bachelor of Science, we're going to be looking for math and two sciences. So that's either chemistry, physics, or biology. For computer science, just the math. Uh, for mathematics, just the math. Um, and then health science is similar to the requirements for the Bachelor of Science. Okay, so that's just kind of a, a high level requirements um, overview. But again, please do go on the website and check it out specifically for yourself. And now for the timeline of when to apply and what to expect through that application process. So applications typically open one year in advance of when you plan to study. So for September 2024, our applications open in September 2023. So in that first um, box of your application, number one, submit the application. And that should be pretty straightforward and not take you very long. We're asking for 
uh, pretty straightforward information. Who are you? Where did you study? What do you want to study? Uh, you'll pay the fee to submit that. And once it's processed in the background on our end within a couple of days, you'll then be prompted to upload your documents. Documents will usually include transcripts. We need to see those grades. And in some cases, proof of English language proficiency. So that could be an IELTS, a TOEFL, a Duolingo PTE test, for example. Now, all of this is going to be submitted and monitored through Carleton's online portal called Carleton 360. So that's where you'll be able to log in, upload your documents, despite whether you applied through Carleton 360 or the OUAC, the Ontario uh, University Application Centre. You'll monitor your application through Carleton's portal. So any updates, any changes will all come through there. And then if you are successful, you'll get an offer. Now through that time though, I wanna emphasize, we do rolling offers of admission for most programs, which includes everything within sciences. So once we get your final documents, it could be four to six weeks for you to receive uh, a decision one way or the other, okay? Once you get that offer of admission, hopefully, it will include a couple of things. It will indicate what program you've been admitted to, because in some cases, perhaps we had to make an alternative offer. So it'll clarify what program you're admitted to. If you are being made an offer of residence, which I'll talk more about, that will be included there. And scholarship. If you are being awarded a scholarship, it will be indicated in that package. All right. So once you have your offer of admission, then you can move on to the next stage, which would be accepting that offer of admission. So once you accept your offer of admission, and at Carleton, that doesn't require a fee at this time, so you can accept your offer of admission. At that point, um, we will we anticipate being able to issue you your provincial attestation letter. Now, this is a new element of the study permit application process as recently announced by our government. So we're still waiting for a formal announcement about what this will look like from the province of Ontario. But as we anticipate now, it will be issued to you after you've accepted your offer of admission. And that will be a required document in addition to the other required documents that you'll need to submit your study permit application which will be that final step securing your study permit in order to then come to Carleton. All right, so uh, hopefully that helps clarify the process for you a little bit. And now let's talk money. All right, so tuition at Carleton. Again, like our requirements, it can vary. It does vary by program. So in Canadian dollars, you're looking at about 32,000 up to 50,000. So our Bachelor of Science programs are going to be on the end closer to 32,000, where our Computer Science program will be at the higher end closer to 48 or 49,000 Canadian dollars. Now these are this year's tuition prices, so it will look slightly different by next year if you're coming in for 2024 or 2025. So in addition to tuition, uh, another cost that you should be considering and planning for is housing. Um, and we know that housing can be um, a bit of a, an overwhelming consideration when you're thinking about traveling and living you know, thousands of kilometers away from where you are from. Um, so I will talk about housing soon, but in terms of cost to live on campus, including all of your food, so an all access meal plan, you're looking at about 12,400 Canadian dollars. Okay, so let's talk about residence and what that looks like briefly. So if you are a student who is coming directly from high school, and that can include a gap year or a couple years of not studying, but you can't have studied at any post-secondary, so no university or college yet. So if high school was your most recent education, you will be eligible for a guaranteed offer of housing on campus. So that is something that would come through your offer package. What you're guaranteed is a double traditional room. Um, and you are, you will be invited to apply for a single room or a suite style room. The fees would just be slightly higher. Um, if you are a transfer student, so you've engaged in some post-secondary education, no problem. 
You can still apply for a spot in residence, but you'll be entered into a lottery system for any spots that are remaining after we've accommodated our first year guaranteed students. Um, and then in second, third, fourth year, again, students are welcome to enter the lottery, but we do see many students at that point, once they're more familiar with the city, moving out into the community. Okay, so I know that you're doing maybe some mental math right now. Um, so what might help is scholarships. So much like the residence guarantee, Entrance scholarships are also reserved for students who are coming directly from high school. So there's no application required with our guaranteed automatic entrance scholarships. You'll be automatically considered with your application. So if you have the equivalent of an 80%, then you will be guaranteed 1,000 Canadian dollars. And then as you can see here, the higher GPA, the more money you can be awarded. These scholarships are renewable. So as long as you maintain an A minus average while uh, at Carleton, then you will retain your scholarship every year. But if you lose it, that's okay. You can earn it back if you get your grades back up. We have another type of scholarship called the Prestige Scholarship. So this is a scholarship that does require an application. And if you are applying for September 2024, the application is fast approaching. It's March 1st. So for this award, we require that students have a minimum admission average of 90% combined with extracurricular activities, volunteer work, athletics. Um, it is a competitive scholarship, so we don't have um, an infinity amount. So we will look at all of those different criteria. Um, so have a look at that. It is slightly more money than those entrance scholarships. So it is worth considering. So those are the, the main types of entrance scholarships that students would be eligible for. But once you are already a Carleton student, you will continue to be eligible for what we call in-course scholarships. So these are scholarships that you would be eligible for, eligible for based on your Carleton academics and GPA. Um, so science does have a number of scholarships that are available to students. So specifically for science students, you're not competing with all other faculties. Um, and Kim, I'll welcome you back on if you have anything to add about the science scholarships, or we can just leave it at that. I know there's a ton of information online. Anything to add? Sorry, can you see me somehow? I can't I see you, know. but we can hear you. Oh, okay. Here we go. There, there you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have uh, lots of scholarships that are available, uh, lots of awards that are available for science students specifically. Um, and as uh, Jessica pointed out, if you go to that link and you type in science, or biochem or neuroscience, you'll see a whole bunch of those pop up. Um, and once again, a lot of them are, are offered uh, on um, recommendation from the Dean of Science. And because that's my portfolio, it's actually me. <laughs> so I'm the one that will adjudicate a lot of these uh, awards. And I should mention as well, um, a lot of the students who mentor with the SSSC are the ones that are successful in getting these awards just because of their community service. Uh, they're often the high achieving students. So uh, a big plug once again for the SSSC. If you if you do come to Carleton, which we hope you will, um, and, and you get involved, uh, the SSSC is a great sort of funneling of some of these awards. Um, I should also mention that uh, we we do have those awards in our office as well. We've got um, the ones that we've just recently see, recently set up, the Black and Indigenous Student Research Internship, which is considered a science-specific award. Um, but for sure, lots and lots of those that are available to students. And, and again, some are domestic, but um, most of them are domestic or international students. So um, yeah, great opportunities for our students to get sort of... Oh, and there's... Um, the Cas G Awards, I've just written a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know if you're aware of those, Jessica, the, the, it's the Student Governance, the Carleton Student Governance uh, Award opportunities, the Provost opportunities. Often there's a Provost Award that is given to, to students in science. Uh, so I'm, I write a lot of letters of support for, for students for the, some of those awards as well. So yeah, definitely lots of, lots of those great chances to, to get some more money. Yeah, perfect. Great, thank you for that. And so I'll just summarize or emphasize on the topic of money that 
when you are applying for your study permit, you do need to demonstrate that you have those funds to pay for living expenses and first year tuition. But once you are a student at Carleton or in Canada, then there are going to be other opportunities to earn some income. So we've talked about the scholarships, but if you think back to the beginning of the presentation, there's also opportunities through work, through co-op, through those research internships to supplement some of your finances as well. Um, okay, so uh, we are about to wrap up kind of the formal element of this session, and then we will go to Q&A. So um, on the screen now, I am sharing my office's email, international at carlton.ca. So if you have questions about anything you've heard here today or had hoped to hear and we weren't able to address, please email us and we'll do our best to answer or connect with Kim's office if it is more of a science related question. And then that QR code too will take you to that website. And on our international admissions website, we have created, I say we, but really Kim and Nady, who's in the background of the session um, and others from the science department have worked really hard at creating this fantastic science webpage where they are highlighting students' success stories and they have testimonials and they have little uh, masterclass sample lectures from some of our outstanding faculty uh, members within science. So please do check that out if you are interested in science. It is really fantastic and will get you inspired, I promise. Even as a, um, a relentless social scientist, I questioned some of my life decisions and thought, maybe I should have been in the sciences after looking at all of that. I was inspired. Um, okay, so I will stop sharing my screen now and I'll stop the recording so that you can feel comfortable if you want to um, unmute.